when a kid sees violence at an early age in the mm -hmm. family, what does that do to the kid? Does it normalize it? Does yep. it does it make them want to be more violent, be less violent, mm -hmm. like and run away from it? What it, what happens? So to what you? it did for me was it did two things. One, it made me it made me realize that violence in my environment was a necessary evil. To do what? Protect yourself. Protect to... whatever. Like, in, if anything happened, violence was now the first result. Mm. No matter what that violence looked like, whether it was fighting, whether it was shooting, what it was like, okay, if if someone can shoot my mother, oh, wow, then they can shoot me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm automatically in protect mode. Mm. Okay, cool. This is what it is. But also, it becomes a tool for regulation. Like you, you start understand like, okay, like violence is what gives me respect. Mm. Violence is what keeps me from being a prey. Right. And so you just start to normalize it. It's like I always I said this to somebody before I said, if you come to New Orleans and you're in a park and a gun goes off, if there's a bunch of kids in the park, I can almost guarantee you they won't run. They know the protocol. They know to get down, look both ways, see where the gunshot's coming from, and then go the opposite way. Mm. That is normalized. That's trauma. No kid should understand the protocol to what to do For with a violence. gunshot. Yeah. yeah. But it's like understood. Like I even knew it at a young age. I would be inside. Gunshots ring the first thing we do. We get under the bed. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like this. This is understood. So it's like the you know in school they teach you like when stop drop the rule. Yeah, yeah. It's like when there's a, when there's a tornado warning, <laughs> yeah. a siren. It's like yep. here's what to do. This yeah. is what you do. So it's like a, a survival handbook, but in real time. Mm. And you also see that no age limit is off limits to getting killed. Wow. Because young kids are getting young kids shot get, up. Yeah, or... like it's happening. Mm -hmm. So you start to understand like, okay, this this is my environment. Me seeing guns, me seeing drugs, prostitution. All right, cool. This Okay, this doesn't yeah. scare me no more. I get it. All right, cool. So now I got the, I have to now walk around and understand how that feels. I have to walk around knowing if I don't do the right things, that could be me mm -hmm. at a young age, right? So, so you have to educate yourself on violence and, prote early. and protecting yourself and being aware of what to do and mm -hmm. how to get out of situations and how oh, to yeah. defend yourself. Con conflict resolution, yeah. like all of those things are apparent at a young age, even, even when it comes down to even just like bare fist fights. Mm -hmm. Like you understand that if I don't handle this situation right here, right now, then it's certain things in this neighborhood I will not be able to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will not be able to go to this store if I let him take him or whoever they are take this dollar from me, mm -hmm. 50 cent from me. Why won't you be able to go to the store? Because now every time they see you, they take more. It's mm -hmm. going to take more. Yeah, unless you defend yourself. Unless you, and it's either going to be, man, it ain't even worth my time going over there messing with him, man. Right. right. What, Let's I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I don't got time to hear that. He's going to beat one of us up. Let me go over there. <laughs> yeah, right? So it's like... It's like the bully in school. That. It's like the bully keeps beating you up until you stand up to the bully. Yep. And, yeah. and then the thing about the bully is the bully never really wants a tough fight. Yeah. Why would I do something tough when I could go where it's easier? Right? Mm -hmm. So you you just start to understand those things. You're like, you know what? And then you start hearing things in the street. Like, your people tell you stuff like... if Let's say you go home. You... You, you my uncle, you send me uh -huh. to the store. And I come back and be like, oh, man, such and such them took it from me. Well, don't come back in here until you either come back with what I gave you yeah. or you come in here bloody. Right. <laughs> Prove me. Right, yeah, show yeah. me that somebody, and now we gonna go out there and take care of that. So wow. now like, those are the realities wow. at a young age and it doesn't say, okay, you're too young for this. Yeah. Now nah, it's whenever it happens, you gotta be able, and so now you develop that mindset, that mentality from a little bitty to adulthood, and what happens is now, you see it so much, it becomes you. Mm -hmm. it, oh, I know how to handle this situation right here. Oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. And then you now teach that trauma. Yeah. Right? You replay it. You from, replay yeah. it. You, so 16, maybe like 14, I was homeless. So my grand, I lived with my grandmother. My grandmother passed away, and I was homeless. Like, literally homeless. Because my, it, it, it wasn't that my family didn't want nothing to do with me, but everybody has their issues. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to take on another burden. You know what I'm saying? No matter what it is. So I dealt with that for a minute, just being homeless. And then I moved my aunt who was on drugs. And I 
started hustling out her house, you know, for survival purposes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just being able to survive. Just understanding, like, I learned this from my mom. So this is how I'm going to eat. Right. right. So school becomes second nature. Survival becomes present. You know, mm-hmm. this is what has to happen. So at 16, I go to prison for attempt murder. Um, I got robbed out of some drugs and some guns, mm-hmm. some money. And in the streets, is it goes back to that same mentality where if I let you get away with this, then I can't hustle no more. Then you're going to do this again to me over and over yeah, again. Yeah, and not only are you going to do it, but Someone else everybody to else. I'm, I'm fair game. They'll hear that you yeah, gave yeah, it. I'm yeah. fair game. And then in the streets, there's this, there's this code of there's a difference between robbing me and jacking me. What's the difference? So if I jack you, it's, yo, give me this. Right. What, you, what you gonna do about it? Right, right. Right? Whether it's a gun or not. It's, it's mine what, now, it, yeah. Yeah, what you gonna do about it? Robbing you is if I have a mask uh, on. Yeah, I don't really know who you are. Face, yeah. Right? So robbing you, you kind of can like, all right, I gotta find out. But jacking me, it's a bold statement. It's like, whatever. And so that has to be met with some type of consequence. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And not always saying it's right, but in the jungle to survive exactly otherwise you gotta move you gotta you gotta and, move to another and city and this ain't what we doing yeah yeah and then nobody, nobody and you don't have time to do all that yeah, like, yeah. that's why I'm trying at. to get so, to the store <laughs> yeah so uh, I went to prison for shooting him and I got 10 years for attempt murder on robbery um, and that's kind of when I'm not gonna say life changed I'm like alright cool I'm in prison because like, your mom was there for a number of years. My mom was in prison, yep. And you would visit her, so you kind of yep. knew that this is an environment that I could potentially be in one day. Yeah, that's like that's that's kind of understood already. Yeah. Like, you already understand that at some point on your journey, you're going to prison. Like, that's it. Like you're going to prison. Um, you're going to, at some point, use a gun on mm-hmm. several different occasions. Wow. Right? Like, this, like this understood already. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it'd be kind of hard for a lot of people to understand that because if you if you if you've never been introduced to that, you never you know like if you've never seen a lion hunt, then when he eat the gazelle, you're like that's so ferocious. But you don't understand the rules of the jungle. You don't understand the rules of the safari, mm-hmm. right? So it may seem grotesque, but in the safari, we know that's that's the ecosystem, right? So in the streets, that's just like part of the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Like All that's right, the environment. Yeah. yeah, it has to happen. What was that like when you knew that you were sentenced to 10 years at 16? Were you like, was it devastating? Is it kind of like, this is my badge of honor? Is it kind of like, man, I was only hoping for a year or two, not right. 10. So I remember uh, my great aunt came to court for me because um, they wanted to give me 35 years. Jeez. Because the dude, you know, he wasn't, again, it was a temporary, so he wasn't dead. Um, and my aunt, she knew the judge. Wow. And she kind of like just told him my story. She's like, look, he just been going through a lot. His mom's in prison. My sister passed away, which was her, my grandmother's sister. You know, he just been out here. He's a better kid than that. You know, he just, you know. So he actually gave me, he, he came to me and he said, you have no other option than to take these 10 years. I'm not asking you, do you want to take them? You're going to take them. You're going to take yeah. these 10 years, <laughs> right? And the DA was like upset about that. Right, because here's an opportunity to take again, you know, and I'm not saying he's mad, but here's an opportunity to take somebody off the streets in a city who's that's plagued with crime for shooting somebody. Like he has to go. So in my mind, I was just like, because I had saw it so much, I was kind of numb to it. Mm. You know, it was like, all right, how much they gonna give me? Right, and I kind of, to be honest with you, the ten, I was like, all right, cool, it's a cakewalk. Wow. You know, think about it. 16, 10 years, I'm like, I'm already like, okay, 25, 26, I'll be home. That's cool. Wow. But let me tell you something that's crazy. Let me tell you something that's absurd. In prison, you will hear people say, oh, I could do another five, 10 years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was that person. At about age 19, I was like, yeah, I still got another 10. I could do another 10 year bit. Well, why? Like, the, that's, why? Because you just, you don't see no other way. Right. Right, like, you kind of have to mentally put yourself there, yeah. otherwise you go crazy. I guess you you kind of feel like one of the things that you don't see a lot in in those communities. Got to remember, we financially and um, 
they just underdeveloped. Yeah. We education, underdeveloped. Yeah, financial. Education, financial literacy. We, we underdeveloped mm -hmm. coming up in that. Everybody you see is in survival mode. Nobody is thriving but the drug dealers, the rappers, and the people that play sports. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Maybe a couple of musicians. Yeah, and if you and if you can't if you can't play sports or if you can't make it rapping, then all the power is now in the drug dealers mm -hmm. or in the criminals. Right? You see them living the life they want. And everybody that you see going to work, they barely making it. Right? You know people with two jobs. Mm -hmm. You know people with three jobs. And all you see them doing is coming home whooped. They still struggling. So you like. I'm not about to do that. If I'm gonna live a life, at least let me have some fun. Mm -hmm. At least let me do some of the things I wanna do. And so in 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 your mind, you're like, if if this is the if this is the alternative, well hell with it, this what it is. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you like, you just accept it. And so when you accept that life, you know what come with it. Right? And so you mentally prepare yourself, like, all right. Well, you ain't here for murder, you ain't here for attempt murder, you ain't here for armed robbery, you ain't here for selling drugs. Man, like, well, you messed up at what you did wrong. So now y'all start swapping stories. You know, he telling you what he messed up at, he telling you what he did wrong. You're like, okay, well, I can get better. Mm -hmm. If I just don't make this mistake, then right. don't do this. So you mm -hmm. learning right. real time from somebody who may have 99 years, 240 years, <clears throat> life, Jeez. the debt penalty. Like you may you may be what, learning from learning them. what not to do when you get what out. not to do where they messed up at and remember experience is the best te teacher in any way in life, right? What mistakes did you make? Okay, cool. That's what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. Got you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna take mental note of that, and you gotta think over the course of two, three, four, five, six years, you sleep on the side of somebody, you learning the game, and in your mind you just like I'm about to go home and be better at this than what I was before. Wow. So you accept the idea of, all right, cool. I, mm. I could do another 10 years. Sure. I did this 10, I could do another 10. It's in me. We have more month left in money all the time, mm -hmm. right? We are, again, we are financially deprived mm -hmm. because we have no relationship with money. Whereas this other class says it's the assets of the blood, of the oxygen to this.